Oh, hey. Do you remember back in February how I posted in my community tab about having seen Madam Web in IMAX? Only for the experience to have scarred me so badly, I stopped uploading for six months, and the last video you guys got from me was me and the homies reacting to scenes from Morbius? Well, I'm back, I'm here, and we're gonna talk some Borderlands, motherfuckers! Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Brock Up side. And, uh, yeah, we got another video game adaptation because those have been, uh, kind of on the up and up lately. And, uh, is this one one of the really good ones, or is it, uh... One of the other ones. And of course, this movie has been out for a few days now, so chances are I'm not the only one out there that's seen the movie. Even though the box office might say otherwise. But if you have seen this movie, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it as well. So go ahead and comment down below your thoughts on Borderlands. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? But before we get too deep into the review, I probably should say that I have no experience with the Borderlands games themselves. I have very little knowledge about them, never played a single minute of them. In fact, the only thing I know about Borderlands begins and ends with this clip right here. I'M THE CONDUCTOR OF THE POOP TRAIN! Spoiler alert, the poop train does not get conducted in this movie whatsoever. And of course, if you clicked on this video, that means you either want to see my beautiful face again, or you want to know how this movie was in IMAX, the big square. So, of course, let's get into that, shall we? So, first things first, the movie was shot on the Arri Alexa 65, one of many cameras that have been approved for the IMAX screen. And that's about where the IMAX optimization goes for this movie. Because unfortunately, the movie stays at the standard 239 aspect ratio, never opening up to 190 to fill up the entire IMAX screen. Now, I've said this before with different videos in the past, that a movie not filling up the entire IMAX screen is not automatically a deal breaker for me, because of course it is a significantly larger, higher quality screen, so it does give you a chance to kind of enjoy the visuals, the cinematography, and the cool sound design a bit more. That is, of course, if the movie has really interesting visuals and good cinematography and good sound design and all of that. Now, while I'm sure the production design, the costumes and stuff look and are relatively accurate to the games themselves, but aside from that, the action sequences are nothing particularly special. Just, you know, a little bit of driving, a little bit of shooting, a couple of uninteresting quips here and there. There's some explosions, and uh, that's about it. And you know how in some previous IMAX reviews I've talked about how the bigger screen and all that can really emphasize the less than stellar VFX sometimes? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think this movie might be a top contender for- Oh my god, how did they get away with this? I have not seen a movie with this level of budget with this poor of VFX in quite some time. It's not even to the point where it's like, oh, the CGI in a couple areas looks a bit synthetic or fake or like a PS3 game or whatever. There is all that in there, yes. However, it goes to a whole new level where it looks like actors are not even fully composited into like these flat hovercrafts and stuff and there are so many moments where you can tell clear as day that this stuff was shot on a blue screen or a green screen because you can still see the freaking green spot around the actors bodies and stuff now one of the standouts of an IMAX experience is a cool laser projector which has really good color and all of that and uh, yeah there's some vibrant colors spread out throughout this movie but honestly none of them really stick out as far as the IMAX presentation goes however if you're a big fan of say the color yellow then you're gonna get your money's worth with this movie because there is a lot of yellow, whether it be, you know, the landscapes or costumes on the actors and stuff, or the scene where the main characters drive through a canyon of piss. Yeah, they just drive through a canyon of piss. I, I, I am gonna hopefully assume that that's part of the game because otherwise, w why would you f make up them driving through a canyon of of piss. So I guess we'll finish things off here with my overall thoughts on the movie itself. And uh, yeah, not being a fan of the games yet, um, I can't really talk about it as far as like adapting the source material faithfully or not. But as far as just a movie goes, it's just pretty much a big old sack of nothing. Like I said, the action's not that great. The humor is just... 
they're trying, God bless them, but it just does not land. Like, there's so many times throughout the movie, especially when Jack Black's Claptrap character, which, by the way, I bought the uh, popcorn bucket for because I thought it looked really cool and it lights up, and I figured if I get into the games, I could be like, hey, look, I got Claptrap, the popcorn bucket, based on the video game. And nothing else. But anytime, especially when his character was on screen making jokes and stuff, I looked at the screen and I was like, okay, I acknowledge that jokes are being told right now, but I am not laughing. Or even or even reacting in any way, shape, or form. It's got a really star-studded cast with Jamie Lee Curtis, Kate Blanchett, Kevin Hart, among so many others. And they just feel like they're all inevitably wasted throughout this entire movie. They have zero chemistry with one another. Oh, child, you are the chosen one. I am a bounty hunter and I am not one to care, but now I care about you. Oh, I care about you too, red-haired Kate Blanchett shit yeah and i think the movie also just suffers from that guardians of the galaxy syndrome where it's trying very hard to recapture what made guardians of the galaxy so good you know with the band of misfit characters as well as a jukebox soundtrack with like you know 70s and 80s music blasting the whole time and you know the reason guardians of the galaxy works is because it's well written has a lot of heart and a lot of emotion in it and the songs and the soundtracks you know reflect that a lot but here it's like oh hey what if we just made everything colorful and then just you know threw some recognizable soundtrack songs and crap in there that'll do right it's such a shame too because apparently the original screenplay that was written for this movie by craig mazin you know the guy that wrote chernobyl and the last of us hbo show the one video game adaptation that we all love so dearly apparently his version of the screenplay was really really good and that's what everybody signed on to make and then director eli roth came in tweaked it up a little too much and then this is uh what we ended up with i think it probably would have been better if they made borderlands into a show because that's where video game adaptations are really shining right now with like you know again last of us and the fallout tv series so yeah video game adaptations are very much on the up and up in terms of quality but i guess we do have to have that little bit of stumbling and falling back a little bit to make sure we appreciate the really good ones coming out and i guess borderlands was that noble sacrifice i guess i don't fucking know Overall, Borderlands was just missed opportunity, the movie with so many elements that they're trying really hard to recreate the magic of other things while not capturing what makes the game so good. Again, I'm just kind of assuming here. And overall, the movie isn't like god awful in my opinion, it's very much watchable. As in, you will walk out of the theater and be like, oh yeah, I watched it. And I feel nothing. As for whether or not you should see this movie in IMAX, I'm gonna say that no. This is very much one of those movies that was just thrown into IMAX just for the sake of having a couple more dollars taken away from gullible audience members and that's about it. Which is kind of funny too because Deadpool and Wolverine are like eating up mostly IMAX screen time right now so they're like two a day so it's like why even bother at that point but you know what? We got Alien Romulus next week, and that's gonna probably look awesome in IMAX, and I can't wait to talk about that. And also, um... I now have this $40 reminder of a very, uh, b b poop-tastic video game movie. I didn't even like this character very much though, why did I buy this? So those are my thoughts on Borderlands and IMAX, if you want to see another IMAX review from me, I got just the thing right over here, otherwise we'll see you on the Brackup side.